You know, it almost makes me nervous that we're not finding much except a dirty filter. I know. Because there's always something wrong with every airplane I've ever seen. This 13-year-old bonanza is Carrie's next big delivery job. When you're meeting a plane for the first time, you never know what you're in for. Even the best-looking plane can have big problems. And master mechanic Russ has been flown down to Uruguay to help find them. Did you check the um, cables and pulleys yet? No, not yet. We're looking at everything, because this is not only a dangerous flight, it's a long one. What's wrong with this thing? It's going to bug the hell out of me if I can't figure that out. No plane is perfect. Kerry's just used to flying a bunch of junk around, so this is really going to scare him when he gets into a nice airplane. <laughs> Even I'd go with him on this flight. When you can get a mechanic to fly with you, that's pretty darn good. But Kerry's real co-pilot is already on the way. This is a really special ferry flight for me because it's the first flight that I get to take with my daughter, Claire. This is going to be quite the journey. I'm so excited, like, especially to share this with my dad. We're both quite the daredevils. It's going to be awesome. She's already a pilot, and I'm just really excited to share this adventure with her. Here she is now. Hi. Hi, Claire. Yeah. I'm Ross. It's great to All meet right, you. Claire. You sure you don't want to get strapped on top, you know, no, yeah, for a wild yeah. ride? If it wasn't for the gross weight, I would. <laughs> I'm, I'm gross weight. Yeah, he's pretty dense. <laughs> Take that however you want. Yeah. <laughs> don't pull it so much. So got a little more slack. We've got a temporary sticker up that will allow it to enter US airspace under its new registration number. Yeah, you just want to keep it nice and light. Carrie and his 18-year-old daughter will haul this single engine over 8,000 kilometers. Okay, he's off the line pulling it, Claire. From Uruguay, it's over the Amazon jungle, where sudden storms are known to pull planes out of the sky. And the Caribbean's no pilot's holiday, with mountainous terrain and short runways. Then, on to North Carolina for final delivery. Come here, Claire. Start learning you some stuff. The end goal of my trip for Claire is to ultimately make her a ferry pilot. That would be great. I would love to see her carry on the, the family business. What you're looking for are loose wires. You want to feel the condition of it. It should feel smooth. All right, so go ahead and stick your hand up in there. All smooth. OK. By the time you're done, Claire, you'll know all about airplanes, yeah. most of it which you won't want to know. <laughs> I'd rather just fly the thing. I know you'd rather just fly the thing, but that's not what we do. I know my dad thinks it's important for me to learn the mechanic skills. If I'm going to be off in some other country, it's good to have knowledge of the plane, but it doesn't really appeal to me. I usually find it easier to scoot further forward so you're just laying on the ground directly underneath it. This is high. I don't want to get dirty. Oh, my god. I got my outfit on. So that's not why I did. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Shut up. The problem comes when it's got to be his way or the highway. Because <laughs> I'm the boss. I'm the dad. I'm the captain. It is Corian. But Carrie's got a boss to answer to as well. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Getting everything all set to leave, and just thought we'd give you a call and touch base. Corey scored this flight, so we have to keep him in the loop. How's the plane? And that thing is so clean, it squeaks. And more importantly, how is your co-pilot? How about, what do you think, Claire? You learned anything yet? <laughs> Nada. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I think she's going to be pretty handy on this trip. That's awesome. Let me know if there's any issues with the plane. All right, Corey. Talk to you later. All right. We are good to go. Good to go. Carrie's not the only one saddling up with a young gun. No, we're just going right. That goes in the cockpit, yeah. Flex. Yes. Four days in with his rookie co-pilot. So we're going to establish some procedures. You swing the gear. Marcio raises the bar on Lex. You swing the flaps. OK, on, on my command. OK. I'm expecting Lex to learn fast. If it gets to a point that I have to tell him two or three times, hey, here's how you have to do this, it's going to be a problem. So uh, you set the numbers. So if he says, climb on 10,000 10, feet, 
you go ahead and you dial 10,000 feet. And same procedure for the uh, for the approach, for all the, the settings, so through the whole, out the, throughout the whole flight. You set altitudes and headings, yes. okay? Concentrate on that. We have a community of ferry pilots. This is a very tight club, man. We know everybody. It's time to fly now. You know, I can go to that group of ours and say, hey, Lex really sucks. You know, and then that's the end of it. Hey, Lex, bring, bring that back. Bring that back. It's hard for young people in aviation to, to prove themselves because experienced pilots look down on you. So it's very, very hard to perform well and to fulfill their expectations. Here we go. You ready for this? Right side is clear. We're fit for takeoff. Lex is 20 years old, and he's already racked up 700 hours in prop planes. Get in up. Let's check. But it's his first time out as a jet jockey. The Phenom trip is a great opportunity to prove myself as a potential ferry pilot. Flaps up. Flaps up. And uh, I want to perform well so that I will be called for trips in the future. So far, Lex and Marcio have covered 7,000 kilometers, all of it over open water. Ahead, four border crossings, including India, where red tape can tie up a plane indefinitely. Final touchdown, Singapore, a trip that covers almost half the circumference of the planet. So Lex, look at this. We can barely make it to Italy at this flight level. If there's one weakness that you can fight in the Phenom is that at lower altitudes, it burns a lot of fuel. We are requesting flight level 450 if possible. If I don't climb, I don't get to my destination. Jack is my good luck, good luck charm. So Jack, give us a little bit of a good luck today. Number six, oh, nine, that's what we got. Flight level four five zero. So go ahead and put it flight level four five zero. I got it. Marcio, it's getting a little older. So as I get older, my patience is decreasing a little bit. We're going to fly uh, the, the flight level profile. Is it OK for you if I, if I set it? Would I prefer to have a guy that I can just, you know, close my eyes and he knows what's going on? Of course. You're going to touch everything, don't you? Right. Dude, go ahead, go ahead. Touch uh, this one. But then I have to stop and think. I've been in his shoes before. There you go. Not touch this one here. Touch this one. Uh, just touch it or tune it. Tune it a little bit. Make you happy. And it's unfair for me not to help the kid. There you go. Not this one. Touch this one here. This one. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> As a young copilot, it's always pure fascination to control things, to enter things, to touch things. So uh, I'm pushing all these buttons, and I was about to touch Jack. No, no, don't touch Jack, man. Don't touch Jack, man. <laughs> no one ever touches Jack. Go ahead and bring the power down to cruise, max cruise. Next cruise set. Oh, just jet, man. Damn. November 600 Golf Yankee, ready for descent. But as they descend, tensions flare up again. They want us to be a certain speed here. We're at 300 knots, dude. The important thing you gotta keep an eye. See, that's why I need you to have my back. I'm, I'm at 300 knots. Pay attention, okay? It's a speed below 10,000 feet everywhere. 250 knots. Why did you say something? Below 10,000 feet, that's where most of the birds fly, you have to be at 250 knots or below. It's an international rule, and it has to be followed. Okay. 250 knots. Okay. Because of the windshield, a bird can go through it. If a bird goes through here, we're all dead. If I have this kid, making mistakes. 
it becomes a problem. Good weather to fly. <laughs> what do you think? I don't think I know. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Look at this. A weather delay could spark a storm on the home front. Well, I have a very, very important deadline to meet. I have to be home. I will be home for my daughter's birthday because this is going to be the ending of my fairy career or my marriage. I would have to choose. Hi. How's it going, Amore? Oh, very, very, very rainy here, thunderstorms. OK. If I had plenty of days to burn, I wouldn't care. But now we don't. I hope you should come back. I come you back okay? in one piece. <laughs> OK. Bye-bye. I love you. The weather is horrible. So we're not going to fly today. We're going to fix a problem that has been bugging me for a while now, since the very beginning. <laughs> OK? OK. The first impression of Lex was not good because of his appearance. Hello. The guy walks in, and the first thing that calls my attention is the three-day beard. It's a big no-no for any professional pilots. You know, I've been requesting a nice, clean shave <laughs> from Lex for the last few days. It hasn't been complied with, so I think that little uh, intervention is required. Are you sure he knows how to do that? All right. Easy does it, OK? Serious note, your hair over your ears and your sideburns going everywhere, it doesn't look professional. What we're looking for is just a haircut. You got nothing, you got just some. I'm a bit stubborn, I'm young, I want to follow my line, but um, he's not happy with it. Uh, you know, there are some standards that people are expecting. No one would show up, you know, delivering on an airplane, looking like a hippie or something, you know? Look at that kid. Really good. Lex, very nice. Nice, huh? Three one six, we're ready for takeoff. Clear to take off. And we are off. Like a prom dress. Uh, it doesn't really apply with Claire and Borg. Gonna have to think of something else. this much weight. Right on. I did overpack okay. too much. <laughs> Until now, all Claire Sky time has been closer to home. Flying is something that's always come really natural to me. Cessna 71 Victor taking up on runway 27 Menominee. I mean, I've been brought up flying. There's pictures of me as a baby in a car seat in the plane with my dad. You have just the open air. It's a really crazy feeling of freedom. Left downwind 27 Menominee. It's about time to test that out on a real huge journey and see how it goes. You want to hand fly for a little while? Sure. Get yourself all set. Kick off the autopilot. Go nuts. What I didn't want to have happen on this trip is just have Claire along as a passenger, as baggage, and I just fly. You know, then she could just might as well sit in the back and eat bonbons or something. I picked up a little speed, 157 knots. Kind of nice. Yeah, we're cruising. I've nicknamed her Supergirl. She was super easy to teach how to ski. She got her scuba rating at 14. Learned how to skydive in four jumps where it normally takes somebody a minimum of seven. 
Her mother says she's maybe just a little bit too like me, and for that, I'm sorry, but... Uh... We're climbing, so push her just a trip. Boom! <laughs> Easy does it there, Sparky. What the heck? I've never flown something so touchy before. Yep. This plane is pretty new compared to what I'm used to flying, so all of the controls are in pretty good condition, which, weirdly enough, it kind of made me struggle a little bit at first. This plane flies a lot faster. When you adjust it, feel gentle like. One thing at a time. Get your wings level. Go back on your heading. Oh, I gotta get in my heading. Close enough. Dust your trim a little bit. Push it. Push a little bit. Don't let go of the... Don't let go of the... Dad, I got it. I might be an 18-year-old girl, you know, freshman in college, whatever, but I am a competent pilot, and I'm here to do business. I wouldn't be along for the ride if I wasn't. It's gonna dive. Then adjust it a little bit more. But I, I mean, you gotta I let it go. We're I 200. need to. I know, Dad. That's what I was just saying. Yeah, listen. I'm not the type of person that lets people push me around. Simple as that, not gonna tolerate it. If my dad's pushing me around, he's no different. I'm gonna push back. Hey, don't concentrate on that for too long. Get back. I you, am you, in I, my, and that, But it's and not that. going down. When Claire and I are flying together and she's at the controls, she needs to listen to me. Safety of the aircraft is in the balance. Some fun. Sure. Set up. Grab the controls. We're gonna do a little slalom course. We're gonna pretend these clouds are mountains. Cloud surfing is excellent training for a new pilot. You really have to learn exactly how to fly the airplane to its limits. And if you screw up a little bit while cloud surfing, no harm, no foul. You gotta get the feel for the airplane. So if you ever have to do any actual hard maneuvers, you know yeah. what it can do. What I want you to do, boom, bouncy, bouncy. See that gap there? Building up a little speed. I want you to pull up over the top of that cloud. We're not, it look like we're in radar contact, so. Not exactly good form to fly all over the sky, but we're out of radar range and no one can see us. So let's play a bit. You want to bank so you don't hit it. Not yet, not yet, not yet. You're too far away. Hey, go through the gap. Through the gap. What are you, the sideways gap. or what? Yeah. Not 100% sideways. And all your nose. Now come left. Come left. Hard left and all your nose. Hard left. Hard left. Hard left. Do not hit that cloud. It's a mountain. There you go. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah. November 316, Papa, approach. November 316, Papa. I know you are making weather deviations, but if possible, maintain high speed. 316, Papa, Roger. He said, I know you're making weather deviations. No, we're just kind of screwing around. I guess we'll stop. November 316, Papa, check if you can fly free of meteorological formations. Okay, he's giving me actual instructions here, I guess. I better do some of that pilot math. You might want to put on your shoulder harness, too, if we're going to go blasting through a lot of these bad boys. We might get kind of bounced around. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, who speaks English? We received your flight plan and it's on the way. Okay, God. Thank you, Donna. After losing a day to bad weather, Marcio's got to get a move on. I need to make sure that he is the one putting gas. Otherwise, he might give me a $5,000 bill. Reining in cost is key to making it in this business. Been doing this for way too long to know how these things work. In Turkey, 
Marcio's on the lookout for price gouging. If you're negotiating, you know, they will charge everything they can. They send you a quote, and then you get it, and say, oh, wow, but that was the tax this, the fee for that, the fee for this. Sir, the receipts come in as well? Coming. With the price on it. I'm not sure now it's writing about price. So we are refueling the phenom, and Marcio wants an invoice, but they are refusing to give him the receipts. And I think he was kind of scared that they are going to charge a different amount. No, no, but I want your services prices. I want your prices. Okay, I will Handling charge, transportation charge, your services, OK? okay? Yeah. I want to see how much this costs. I don't like surprises. And especially, I don't like expensive surprises. Don't make it, I will send it. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, I mean, I don't understand. Who is saying no? Mercury. Who is Mercury? Understand? No, I don't. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I'm so sorry. Marcio is stiffed on a final receipt. That means they're going to get screwed. That's what it means. He'll get billed for this later. Exactly what that means. Being experienced doesn't mean that you're invincible. Things can always happen. Take off. OK. It ain't not. But checked. Yep. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. For Lex, the miles logged so far on this jet are paying off. Climbing level 210, November 6th, and go thinking. Being young uh, doesn't mean that I'm not competent. Over the hours, you get to know the plane. November 6, 9, 9, Gulf Yankee, confirm passing altitude. We are in uh, 2,000 feet, November 6, 9, 9, Gulf Yankee. I'm able to catch up with a lot of things very quick. Circle 1, 1, which right, way was circle? Circle. circle to land, not off arrive, northeast of runway. It builds my confidence, just like going from zero to hero. November 6 nano uh, Golf Yankee making its inbound turn. Continue approach, final runway. But Lex is about to face a whole new challenge, competition. Today we're picking up a new crew member. We're going to take him all the way to Singapore, Captain Amaury Rivera. Amaury, nice to meet you. Sir. Nice to meet you. Amaury used to pilot this jet for its old owner. You miss her? I'm very glad that you actually took very good care of my plane. Or at least what it used to be my airplane. <laughs> now he has to prove himself to the new owner. So Marcio will be testing him on the next leg of this journey. Good, are you ready for this adventure? Uh, I'm absolutely ready, yes. Very good, very good. I see a Maori, and I'm thinking, like, does he really have to fly with us to Singapore? Oh, we got to get going. No problem. Uh, let me know if uh, there's anything that, I, right. that you need me to do for the flight, OK? He's taking away my seat, my, my experience that I need so much. Hello. Hey, Kerry. How you doing? Got to call Corey again while we're on the ground. Any of those crazy storms I'm giving you any trouble? They looked dark, but it was absolutely a beautiful flight. I sure miss the good old days. No cell phones, and the boss couldn't check up on you. All you did was get in the plane and go. Well, good luck with chasing those storms down. Be careful. All right. Bye-bye. All right, Claire, why don't you go see if you can take care of the landing fees? How the heck am I supposed to ask? I'm in Portuguese. Just go upstairs to the airport administration and see what you can do. I don't speak Portuguese either, so good luck. Well, she's going to be ferrying aircraft. She needs to learn how to do this. A lot of times, you know, we don't have a set plan. We don't know where to go. We don't know how to speak the language. You just dive in, get whatever help you can. Uh, Spanish in, or Espanol? Yes. Um, English? No. no. Yo necesito pegar. Okay. My dad thought that having me along, oh, I'd be like a little translator. But it's a little different in the classroom in Wisconsin than it is out in Brazil. Hola. Hola. Yo necesito pegar por la avión, ir aquí, land, landing fees, tariffs, 
we're he we landed here, so we have to pay landing fees. Uh, do you need uh, feeding the flight plane? Okay. Um, mm, I think that's okay. I had no idea what he was trying to say, and he was really confused too. So, yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> I just want to get out of here. It's taking forever. Please. This is a new tax fee, okay? And this is liberation to take off. Sounds Keep perfect. Going. Thank you for all your help. We have till 12 to take off. Okay, I, thought, I thought it was going to be so easy. What took so long? You want to do this takeoff, Claire? Oh. This plane is a little different compared to what I'm used to flying. It's it's a pretty heavy airplane. I'll tell you when to start rotating. The big trick is to be smooth. Don't jerk it off the ground. All right, here we go. A little faster. It's not an easy plane to take off. You have to be easy on the control. But it speeds a lot. Right away, it jerked and I'm kind of startled by that. That's a good attitude. Nicely done, Claire. Morning. Should be about uh, 10 minutes prior to 4 o'clock in the morning. Time for Marcio to muster his two co-pilots for the final push to Singapore. Yeah, we'll see how Maurice's feeling, man, because uh, he was uh, pretty sick last night. Let's go check on him, see how he's feeling. A bad sinus infection has a Maori laid low. Hey, man, how you feeling, buddy? Yeah, I'll be downstairs in 10 minutes. OK, we'll see you downstairs in 10 minutes. You know, from all my calculations, legs, distances, Everything went fine. There's one major mistake that I made. It was the number of socks that I should bring. So now I'm uh, on my last pair of socks. They happen to be white. Downstairs, Lex. Maybe a bit too big? Is wearing white, too. You know, this is a pilot makeover edition. Some space. Huh? Nice. That's good. You know, he came out as this little hippie dude, you know, and he came out of there, you know, an aviator. It's going to be a huge day. It's going to be the longest day. Uh, it's the last day, so uh, I really want to get there before uh, sunset. Now it's almost 4 o'clock in the morning, so... The Maori is sick. What I think of is, of course, it's, oh, I can fly the remaining legs, which doesn't sound nice, but every chance that I have to fly, I need to take it because it might be the only one that I have. There's something coming. Here we are. Amaori seems to have rallied back from his illness in time to face his critical test. Dr. Amaori, how are you? Can you fly? <coughs> Can you fly? Yeah. <coughs> this is our last day, and this is the only chance for Amaori to fly with me to get my evaluation. Amaori needs two thumbs up from Marcio if he wants to fly for the new owner in Singapore. Amori has to prove he's fit for the job. It's that simple. The job has certain requirements, and he has to check all the boxes. This is going to be a right turn to runway uh, 11. On the left, on the right. What I'll be looking for in Amori is uh, flight skills, professionalism, safety in the cockpit. That's what I really care about. Ahead of them is a four-hour flight to India, then another four hours to Singapore. <coughs> this is not an ideal situation. Uh, he's pretty sick. We're going to see how it goes. November 6, 9, golf tank is ready for departure. Sitting in the back of the plane as a pilot is, of course, not, not a nice thing. B1, rotate. Because you want to sit in front, you want to be in the game. Positive right, get up, please. But Amaury is fighting to stay in the game. My future job is at stake here. Thousand, when the lights off, when she hits on. And uh, I need to perform at 100%, 100% of the time. 
thousand foot checklist. Just turn the lights on with the radar. You sit. So you can imagine the pressure that is over my shoulders. We shall hit his on check so be it. Give you pressure the ears? Huh? No, uh it's mostly on the sand probably. Yeah, I feel the ear popping, which means that the ear is making an effort to equalize, which is a good thing. That's something that you want. Almost there, man. You comfortable doing this stuff, man? Flying alone here and um, I've done it, but I'm talking about Singapore and shit like that. Radio November 69, Golf Yankee. November 69, Golf Yankee radar. Yes, sir, request a descent. November 69, Golf Victor descent flight level 150. Comfortable doing this, man? I'm feeling pressure in the, the air. We can't do it lower than this. The worst uh, thing that can happen is that the membrane that you have inside your ear gets completely ripped apart. And that means that you are not going to be able to fly for probably months. Yankee runway 07 clear to land with 180 degrees 06 knot. HE1, good day, November 69, go for Yankee. Level off here, please. Level off? Oh, man. Amari's eardrum is still in one piece. Let it go, 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 let it go. But is his job. Amari! So uh, my recommendation would be a positive one for the owners. If I think you are safe, you know, no issues, I'll tell them. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's my fuel truck. Here, red tape is a national tradition. The pure example of bureaucracy in India, usually to get a fuel, I have to sign one piece of paper, one receipt. Here they requested four signatures. They're not allowing us to go there because we don't have a visa. So they're gonna have to come back here, get the money, go back there, pay the money, get another stamp, another signature, come back here, file the flight plan, go back there. So it's gonna be back and forth about three or four times. Marcio is very well organized. He wants everything to be planned, detailed, but some countries, when you go there, it's just different. They still need to log 3,000 kilometers to deliver the jet tonight. Honey, I'm almost there. And Marcio has to deliver birthday greetings. Get the cake ready. To his daughter back home in just 24 hours. 2.05 in Singapore, no, 2.10. We're already, we should be in the air now 10 minutes ago. The clock is ticking. No, sir, I send, I send multiple emails, multiple emails. Okay, I'm tired, and I've been here for more than one hour now. I send it multiple emails. That's what it is. I mean, I send multiple emails. Oh, it's typical Indian, man. I can see that Marcio is not far away from exploding. I mean, he, he can't do anything against it. It's just how things are. You've got to be kidding me. You guys told me 10 minutes. It has been an hour and 10 minutes. No, what about no? Customs see me. He has a certain limit and beyond that i don't want to be close to him number six nine and golf yankee stand by standing by six nine golf yankee we're still waiting for the bureaucracy to make its way to the tower now we paid we cleared but now he's waiting for one last something to let us go Number 69, Golf Yankee, start up route, runway 07, QNH 1011. Here we go. The speed is alive, engine instruments all in the green. Positive rate of climb. Get up. Get up. A two-hour delay in India. It's already in quarter past five now. 
will put Marcio and Lex down after dark. Rep, 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 eight of fucking eight. And that's a problem. From this airport now, uh, so we're gonna go to our final destination. And it's a visual airport, so there's no uh, instruments to help me. I'm gonna be looking outside the window. Also, it's getting dark. I'm uh, a little bit tired as well. It has been a very long day. It starts to build a little bit of anxiety. Now this feels like Brazil. On the edge of the Amazon, Carrie and his daughter Claire face four hours across solid jungle. Yeah, there's that super high, hot humidity I missed so much. When you're heading into an area that's notorious for bad weather, it's a good idea to check with the locals first. Tem TCU no setor noroeste que eu passei, né? No setor noroeste ali tem um TCU. É a única formação que tem prós. <laughs> well, apparently that was funny. This weather briefer is giving me tons of valuable information. Manaus. You think that will get Saída. bigger? Unfortunately, I don't speak Portuguese. Possibility, boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you going from? Wisconsin. Coming from Miami. Oh, yeah. Where are you guys going from here? Manaus. Manaus. It's terrible that way. Is it? Yeah, we're, we're trying to decide if we're going to try and go now or not. I jump like a kangaroo. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was very bumpy. I'm going to stay over. I really trust what a fellow ferry pilot tells me about the weather on the route he just flew, because we're kind of a band of brothers. We look out for each other. I mean, if we have enough fuel, you think, I would say, let's just try it. You ready to get bounced around? Go for it, man. Yeah. Might happen. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. I know. Normally, I'm the one who's going for it, and all of a sudden, Claire wants to go for it, and I was the one thinking, maybe we should call it a night. I mean, if you don't think you can handle it. All right, I'll go for it. Crazy girl. <laughs> Why not? Your flight plane will be for tomorrow? No, we're going for it. Now? Yeah. You going? Yeah. Good luck. It's, it's too big. The thunderstorms are too big. That's a small airplane. Speed's alive. Angle. You went up? You're up. Crazy girl. Scary Clary. Scary Clary. Sir, very last landing, a little bit of turbulence, a little bit of weather. With a Maori's test flight over, Lex is back in the hot seat. Sending 4,000 feet November Gulf Yankee. Singapore has six airports. That's right there. I think I think it's right there. There's the airport? I think so has no automated guidance system to bring them in. It's here. It's quite, still quite far. They'll have to find it by sight. Do you think that? Yeah. I'm not sure. It would be too close, I guess. You have to spot the runway somewhere in between all these lights. There are many lights out there. It's dark. I don't know the city. And now I really have to help Marcio out because he's focused on flying. I think it's right there. I see a light. At the flashing. That's it. That should be, that should be it. Keep an eye on that airport, OK? Keep an eye on that. Yes. It's the biggest test. I need to focus. I need to look out and make sure that we don't fly into some other airspace. It can be fatal to mess up in that situation. Right turn 180 November Gulf Yankee. Now Lex has to line up the runway. Runway is in sight. Yeah, gear down. Gear down. And we're going Yankee. Final runway is in sight. Runway to this way. A wet runway can throw a fast jet into a skid. Keep 
try on my uh, airspeed now. I will. They need to come in low and slow. We're a team, and we have to be one unit together. 125. Lex has to be bang on the numbers. Up to three, who did the land? 116, 140, 112, 110. Okay, another three. Only a only. We made it. It's Shazam for one last time. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Good evening, gentlemen. Finally here. They've knocked down 19,000 kilometers. Nice, well done. Thank you. And made a co-pilot out of a kid. Lex was exposed to many lessons that might have changed him uh, forever. By the end, Marcio says he wanted to fly again with me in the future, and that's all I want, that uh, he's happy to fly with me. In aviation, he still has a lot of things to learn. I'm sure he does. But look at him. I would not be a bit surprised if in a few years, Lex calls me and hires me. This puts us officially in the Amazon. Boy, we are already over some pretty serious jungle. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Dance. <laughs> you know, Claire, when we started this trip, kind of thinking, well, you know, I might have to take less chances with you along because, well, you're my baby girl and I got to take care of you. And I, I never thought you'd be the one pushing me to take more risks than I normally would. <laughs> Part of the reason I wanted to go so bad is to see some real action here. I mean, this trip's been way too easy so far. <laughs> I know it can't be that easy, being a ferry pilot. I'd turn it back now. We don't know that. OK, we don't know that. When you're pushing the range in some of these airplanes and you're dealing with weather, it is very important to have a backup plan. What I try to do is save as much gas as possible. If you get to a huge thunderstorm, you've got extra gas to orbit and wait for the thunderstorm to move out. There's good rain coming down. That lightning ahead. Claire said she wanted to go. I decided to say OK. She needs to understand the consequences of her actions and decisions. She's about to find out. All right, well, tighten your seatbelt, Claire, because here's the first storm we got to dodge. That is a huge cluster right straight ahead. Yeah. I've seen some pretty crazy storms, you know, living in Wisconsin. We get our fair share, but... Wow, that's a lot of lightning. A storm over the Amazon was something a little different. I don't know how we're going to get around this one. It came in fast and hard. Boy, oh, it's visibility's really dropping. We've got sunset in 50 minutes. Yeah, I think this is going to be a real live one here. Next time on Dangerous Flights. Police Federal. Federal Police. Busted in Brazil. This sucks a lot. There's another one. Alarm over Africa. Are we talking okay, last year? I don't know. Noisy as hell. And Crash Course Extreme Edition. You should be careful under the snakes. This is crazy.